this is Brandon with DB Services. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a Claris Connect integration between FileMaker and QuickBooks Online. Uh, it's pretty easy and straightforward to do. Definitely um, a nice quick alternative uh, to a integration between your FileMaker file and a existing QuickBooks Online account. Uh, for this demonstration, you will need a uh, Intuit developer account as well as an active QuickBooks Online company file. Um, at this time, Claris Connect will not integrate with the sandbox environment from Intuit, so you will need at least the free trial version, um, if not a full QuickBooks Online account, in order to get this set up and give it a try. You'll also, of course, need a Claris Connect account <clears throat> available uh, on clarisconnect.com. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, this is the demo file that is available uh, in the associated article. Um, and you'll see it has some instructions here as well. The first thing you'll need to do is go ahead and host a copy of this file on your server. Um, it is required, of course, that the file be available online <clears throat> uh, for REST API connections. You'll also want to make sure that the user that you're logging in with for the file has the REST, FM REST permissions uh, enabled for its privilege set. So once you've got your file set up, um, you can go ahead and open your Claris Connect account, which we have here. Um, and I've started a new project for a QuickBooks Online integration. So you can see the one I've already built, but just to start out, we'll go ahead and make a new flow. And we'll just call it QBO test. Um, so the first thing you need to do once you've started your flow is select your correct trigger. Now, if you're using FileMaker's uh, specific cloud, um, you can choose the FileMaker cloud option. Um, if you're using your own server or another hosted option, you can choose the FileMaker server 18v3. Of course, your server will need to be on that version or higher in order for this to work. So we go ahead and select that, and then we can continue, and it'll ask you to connect your account. Um, the Claris Connect does remember all the accounts you've attempted to connect to a project. Um, so that's why you see all these options here. But for this example, let's go ahead and connect a new one. And what we're going to do here is enter all of our information for where our file is hosted. In my case, that's going to be cloud.dbservices.com. And then we're going to go ahead and enter our credentials here. Um, and then your file name. And again, just make sure that you enter the domain doesn't need the HTTP prefix. The database doesn't need the .fmp12 suffix. Um, and you, again, you want to make sure your user has the FM REST permissions enabled and then go ahead and sign in and it will connect your account um, and you have the option to rename this something helpful if you want. Um, you can just call it QBO test, whatever makes sense for you to keep all of your servers straight if you have multiple. So then you can continue and the next thing you'll see is it gives you some instructions here for how to connect your file to this flow specifically. Um, and it provides you a callback URL here that you can utilize in your FileMaker file. Now, if you're using the demo file, I've already set this up for you so that all you have to do is enter the URL it provided into the box here and choose connect. And it will go ahead and immediately connect your file to the trigger here. And then you can choose save trigger and you're ready to go. So that is all it takes to connect FileMaker to Claris Connect. No authentication. Nothing special, um, just a simple script to deliver some uh, to deliver some curl data to Claris Connect one time, and then you're all set to go. So now uh, let's go ahead and if you go back to the demo file, we're now ready to go. We can click our go to invoices. For this demo, all I'm going to be showing is an example of how to send an invoice with an associated customer to QuickBooks Online. There's, of course, a lot more you can do. You can create bills, um, items, accounts, many other things. Um, and you're welcome to explore that on your own with the available options from Claris Connect. So you can see I already have an invoice set up here um, for my sample customer. Um, you're more than willing to add any other additional customers that you may need just for try this out, as well as invoice line items here. We just have a single line item that we're utilizing. Um, so the first thing we want to do uh, since I'm already using this customer, uh, I'm going in my QuickBooks. I'm going to go ahead and make a new customer, um, and you can do that just by opening the customer option here, the customer layout, and creating a new record. So to generate a new customer, I'm just going to call this one with a name of new customer, 
and we'll just give them a quick email and a phone number. If you choose to add an additional customer option uh, for your invoice that you're testing. And the reason I'm doing that is so that when I sync this to QuickBooks, it'll create a brand new customer to show you how that's going to work. Um, so the, you'll notice, let's go take a look at our flow. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the QuickBooks online flow that I've prepared. And this is fully built out here um, to kind of demonstrate for you all the steps that you'll want to go through in order to create a online sync. Um, I'm not going to highlight every single option here. There's some additional details in the article. Feel free to read through those um, for additional information on how to set this up. But essentially, what we're doing is from the script trigger, and I'm going to make sure that I have the correct URL here uh, for this flow, from the script trigger um, in our enabled flow, we're essentially sending the customer data to Claris Connect. So all of our information for the customer, all of our information for the line item, and all of our information for the invoice are all being delivered as one JSON package. So you can kind of see that if we take a quick look at the script, that what I'm doing is essentially verifying I have all the information I need here, and then I'm gathering up all of my invoice data, all of my customer data, and all of my line item data as a JSON array. And then I'm just using a simple curl with an insert from URL uh, for the, uh, the URL that was provided uh, from Claris Connect in order to deliver all that information up front to Claris Connect. Because your flow is essentially going to take all of that data and try and do everything it might possibly need in order to sync that invoice. So you want to send all of that up front. Um, and you can review that in the demo file as well. So <clears throat> here in the flow, you can see that the first thing I'm doing is looking to see if I already have a QuickBooks ID from my customer. Um, this is, of course, what ties uh, QuickBooks' internal ID number to your FileMaker uh, customer so that they can always stay connected. That way, even if you make updates to the customer later, it will always update the correct customer in QuickBooks. So um, the essential workflow that you want to use uh, when syncing to QuickBooks Online is see if you already have that existing customer based on the ID. If you have no customer ID, check and look for a matching name. This will prevent you from creating duplicate customers or getting errors back from QuickBooks if you're trying to sync a customer that already exists. So you can do a query to check for that customer by name. Um, you'll notice that I'm using these on error flow steps here to capture any potential connection issues or, um, or errors from the QuickBooks online sync. And then what this step is doing here is if I do have an error, it calls a return script in my FileMaker file and sends it those error details um, so that I can capture that information back on the other side. And then I stop my flow so I don't continue to do things when I already have an error. Um, so once I've done the query, if I found an existing customer by name, I update my customer QuickBooks ID variable to that one that I found. If I didn't find a matching customer by name, meaning this is a new customer that I've not yet synced, I will create that new customer um, and then set my ID to the, the QB ID of that customer I just created. So once I've got my customer ID, either by providing it from FileMaker, finding a matching name, or creating a new customer, um, I make sure that that ID still matches an existing customer in QuickBooks. This is to prevent an issue like if you've synced a customer in QuickBooks and then later a user deletes that customer and your stored ID is no longer valid, you won't have a problem trying to sync invoices to a customer that doesn't exist. So I use a query here to make sure that the variable of the customer that I provided does in fact exist. And then if I don't have a match, I immediately exit, meaning I have no valid customer. Otherwise, I run an update on my customer entity in QuickBooks to make sure that all of my information, such as phone, email, and the customer name are up to date. And then once that's done, I can create my actual invoice uh, with all of the information that I provided. So that's the basic flow for a Claris Connect integration to QuickBooks for generating an invoice on an existing customer. And then at the end of all that, I use a return to FileMaker step here, and I choose to deliver as a JSON information all of the details that I got back from QuickBooks as I did all these steps. So you can see here I have customer information, the record details, the ID numbers for both my invoice and my customer, as well as the sync time 
um, that all of this information was updated. And that way I can store the IDs of the invoice and the customer in FileMaker in case I ever need to update them later. And I provided at the, at the beginning in my insert from URL, the primary key record IDs for my customer and for my invoice so that I can find them in the return step. So it's important to remember that once you send a call in FileMaker to your Claris Connect flow, that's essentially the last thing you can do. Um, once you've made that call, all of the information that is happening in the flow is outside of this script. So anything that you want to do afterwards, you want to make sure that you call a separate return from Claris Connect and provide it all the details it needs in order to make any updates in your FileMaker script. So now let's take a look here. If I try and sync my new customer, I just have to hit the sync button and it should give it a try. Now you'll notice that I have an item category ID here. What's important about this is if we look at our create invoice script step, that QuickBooks requires that you have an item category number. This tells it when the invoice syncs to QuickBooks, which item from my QuickBooks account list do I use to tie to this invoice line item. And the reason this is important is because at this time, Claris Connect does not allow you to query the items by name. So what you have to do is specifically provide a hard-coded ID that matches an existing QuickBooks ID. You can get that by going to the Intuit developer site that you should have an account with, going to the API Explorer, and then if you use the item option, you'll see that there is a query an item selection here, and it provides you a simple query that you can use to view all of the queries associated with your particular company. As you can see, I've selected my BTDB services company here. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go to my QuickBooks, which is this is my trial QuickBooks account, and it's going to take a look at my list of products and services. And you can see I've only got two in here right now, accounting and sales. And if I do, all I'm going to do is a simple, just select star from item, which means give me everything that you find in my item list. And you'll see here I have accounting services as well as sales, which are the two that I had in my QuickBooks account. And what you're looking for is the value of ID right here. I only have one and two, and that's why in my FileMaker file, my item category ID is one, which means that every line item I sync is going to be associated with the sales item category. And this is required to sync invoices. So at this point in time, you'll need to make sure you have a way of storing this information for line item categories in QuickBooks. My suggestion is at this time, you go ahead and combine all of your line items into one single value that you pass to Claris Connect. And the reason for that is because there's not a great way to dynamically sync a variable number of line items via the Claris Connect integration at this time. Um, there are two options that you have, one of which is to combine all of your quantity, cost, and total values into a single line and deliver that to Claris Connect, which is what we're doing in this example. The other option that you can do is you can provide a, uh, a JSON list, an array of all your different line items, and you can use a count of the total number of line items along with some Claris Connect flow steps that identify how many line items you have and use an if statement that will essentially build hard-coded number of line items here. So I can have, multi you're allowed to add multiple line items, but they have to be hard-coded. So I could use an if statement with multiple create invoice steps that say, if I have two line items, use this flow step that creates two. If I have three line items, use this create invoice that has three hard coded line items. Obviously, this is not as an elegant solution if you have, especially if you have a large number of line items. Um, but it is a possibility if you have a requirement um, of more than one line item. Um, but for the simple example, um, we're just going to use the the one option that we have here for this particular single line item. So let's give it a shot. <clears throat> and at this point in time, you can see my full flow is ready to go and my flow is enabled. So we should be able to go ahead and update with the single line item that we have here um, with our given line item ID and see if we can't get this to sync. So let's go ahead and run our option for our invoice. You'll see that we got an okay response. 
Now this will always occur as long as the delivery of your data to the flow is correct. So even if you may have gotten errors in the flow, this OK is simply indicating to you that your delivery to the URL you provided uh, was successful. So you know that your insert from URL script step did work. Now this view return message allows you to see what data you got back from the return from Claris Connect. And you can see that it's returned all of my record information as well as my QB IDs, which means my sync was successful. And you can see that I'm also storing that here on the invoice itself, um, the ID and the sync, uh, the last sync time. Now, if we go and take a look in our QuickBooks and we go to our customers, we should now see that we have new customer, which is the one we just created, as well as the invoice synced here uh, with all of our information for this customer and for the line item that we gave. So here's our item one at our product of sales with the total amount. So as you can see, that was successful with creating the customer as well as creating the invoice on that customer. Um, so that right there is all the basics for how to create a sync between a FileMaker file and QuickBooks Online using Claris Connect. As you can see, this is quite easy to set up. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of authentication and steps like that. Um, all you pretty much have to do is sign into your QuickBooks account um, and create some simple steps from FileMaker to deliver information to the Claris Connect flow and then walk through these existing steps. This is a great option um, for a low code solution uh, for simple integrations with Claris Connect that don't require a lot of details. So thank you very much. And please check out the online article for additional details and contact DB services if you need assistance in getting this going for yourself. Thank you.